I'm in Spring Initializer so that I can bootstrap the backend application. And I've already pre-filled all the information on the left. So you can see that I've already selected a group ID, artifact ID, and a name for the project and everything. The package is going to be JAR and the version of Java that I'm going to be using is 11. You can use Java 8 or 9, 10 or whatever. Just don't go below 8. And on the right, I have all the dependencies that I'm going to be using. So this is going to be a web application. So I have the Spring Web and then I need the MySQL drivers. And then I have the validations and then I have Spring JPA so that I can map my classes to the database as tables. And then I have Lombok to help me with getters and setters. So typical stuff here, nothing crazy. And I'm going to go ahead and generate the project by just clicking on this generate button and I'm just going to save it. All right. So it's saved as a zip file. So I'm going to go ahead and open this with IntelliJ after I unzip it. I have the brand new project open in IntelliJ and I'm going to expand this folder right here. And I'm going to go ahead and click on the main application class and expand this so you can see that this is a typical Swing Boot application. So the first thing I want to do is to create a folder and then put all the domains that I'm going to be working with in the application. So I'm going to right click here and go to new and then go to package and I'm going to call this model. So you can call this model or domain or whatever else makes sense to you. But usually it's model or domain. And in here, I'm going to create the server that I'm going to be managing. So here I'm going to say server. So this is the class that I'm going to be creating that's going to represent the servers. And the first thing I want to do is to define an ID. So I'm going to go here and do private and that's going to be of type long. And this is the ID. So this is going to represent the ID of the server. And this is also going to be the primary key in the database. If you've been using JPA, then you already know how this goes because we need every entry in the table to have a unique identifier. In this case, that's going to be the primary key. And then we need the IP address and this is going to be a string. So I'm going to do IP address. And we also need the name. So that's the name of the server. I uh, need to do private first, so private string name. So that's going to represent the name. And then we need the memory. So again, private string memory. And then we need the type. So private string type. And then we need the image URL because every server is going to have a little image to represent that server. So we're going to do private. That's going to be a string and we're going to call this image URL. And then lastly, we're going to have the status of the server. So I'm going to do another private and I'm going to create an enum. So I'm going to call it status and then we're going to call it status. So that's going to represent the server up or server down that we saw in the demo of the application. And I'm going to come here and create another package and I'm going to call it enumeration and inside of this package, I'm going to create this status. So I'm going to copy this and right click and create a new class and I'm going to paste it and it's going to be an enum. So I'm going to select the enum and then press enter and the servers, they're going to have two statuses. So we're going to have server up. So I'm going to do server underscore up. So that's going to represent the server up status and we can put the string in there as well. I'm going to do server underscore up and then we have the server down. So I'm going to do server underscore down. Also put in the string in here, server underscore down and then semicolon. So because we have the string that represent the status, we also have to define some getters and setters. So I'm going to do private and that's going to be final. That's going to be a string, which is going to be the status. And then I need to define a constructor. So here I'm going to say status and then give it the status. So I'm going to do status and that's going to be the status. And then I'm going to do this, that status equals the status that we got. And I don't know if we're going to need it, but just in case we're going to do another public and that's going to return a string and I'm going to call it get status and it's not going to take any parameters because it's a getter. And in here, what I want to do is to just return the status. So we're going to say return this status. And then I'm going to put a space here just so we can see everything clearly. And then I'm going to go here and see if I can import that import class. And it should come from our package and that should be all we have to do here. And you can see that the error goes away. Now I see that I'm getting errors in the status class. So let's come back here and I see that I'm passing a status here, but this is actually supposed to be a string. So let's go ahead and fix that. And that should be all we have to do to fix everything. So now we have the class that represent the servers here. But remember, we're going to be saving everything to a database. So we need to map everything to the MySQL database as a table. So that means we're going to need to put in some annotation here. So let's go down here. And the first one is going to be at entity. So at entity. And then we need to add in at data. So that's coming from Lumbox so that we can get getters and setters and stuff. 
and we also need the no arcs constructor so no arcs constructor and also the all arcs constructor so all arcs constructor so now this is giving us an error because we put the at entity annotation and we didn't specify an id which is going to be the primary key so we're going to come down to the ids by the way this can also be any other data type or anything that is unique on the class it doesn't necessarily have to be an id and i'm going to do add id so that's going to represent the id and also we need to tell it how to generate this id so i'm going to do add generated value from java persistence and i'm going to give it a strategy of auto because it doesn't really matter at this case so we're just going to give it this strategy so let's make sure we import everything import from java x and import this as well more action import static another thing that i want to do is i don't want this ip address to be empty so whenever we're saving a new server at least we have to get the ip address if you don't get anything else to be able to save something in the database so i'm going to go down here and i'm going to add a constraint so i'm going to do add column and i'm going to pass in the unique so i'm going to say unique set this to true so what this is going to do is it's going to create a constraint on this IP address so that we can't have more than one IP address of the same number. So if you try to save something in a database and we already have the same IP address, then it's going to throw us a constraint exception in MySQL. And that's just going to make the application throw an exception overall. So the user will never be able to save the same IP address twice. And then we're going to add the validation. So here I'm going to say not empty. So this is why we brought in the validation and then we can also pass in a message for that. We're going to say IP address cannot be empty or null. OK, so that's going to make sure that whenever they're sending a request, they must send an IP address. Otherwise, this is going to catch it and it's going to throw an exception. So we have our validations on the IP address. The column unique true is going to create a constraint. So we can only have one IP address in the database. So if we try to save the same IP address again, then it's going to give us an error. So that's what this column unique is doing. So we're making sure that this is unique in the database. And then also we don't accept any request that comes in without having this IP address if it's null or anything like that, because we have this not empty. So it's going to check to make sure that the IP address is there whenever there's a request coming in with this object. And that's all we have to do for this class.